All right, guys, so this is my 72, and I think it's a 72, although I can't confirm, Alice Chalmers 615 backhoe. Now, I know absolutely nothing about this machine. I can't find any information about this machine, and I kind of wish I never bought it because, you know, they're just so obsolete. I mean, I type in Alice Chalmers 2200 diesel, and I get nothing. Okay, I'm basically just making this video for other people out there who have an Alice Chalmers 615. Um, maybe you guys can learn something off of this. I just want to put another video out there in the world. So if there's a guy out there who is looking for a video about a 615, well, you're not alone. Okay, I have one too. So basically, I paid a thousand dollars for it, and let me tell you something. This thing has made its money back tenfold. Okay, it doesn't look pretty, but let me tell you something. This has a real strong diesel engine, four cylinder. Um, I did change the fuel filter, and I changed the engine oil with some Rotella synthetic blend. And uh, the only reason I did that is because, you know, I was able to cross-reference the filter. I got a new Wix filter. I was able to get the oil and I was able to change the fuel filter which was another horror story because then I had air in the lines and I had to bleed the air out of the injectors and everything and then recently uh, we lost the alternator uh, it wasn't charging at all so I actually went to advanced auto parts and I got a remanufactured alternator for forty dollars and it's the same exact thing it's a Delco Remy it has your one post terminal with your plug for your tachometer ground clamp and uh, I'll put the part number in the description below but that that's a perfect fit this machine uh, is not like a Ford okay so you have your four gears here and then you have your shuttle clutch for forward and backwards which I'm still kind of confused some people say foot on the clutch pedal to shift into first and then you don't need the clutch for the shuttle clutch but uh, I still use it either way. One feature I do like about this machine is that it has your bucket in and out and up and down all in one. It's not two joysticks, it's just one which is convenient. This uh, box leaks like a sieve. And then down here Oil pressure gauge is original, but I put a water temp gauge and it runs consistently at 175, which is good. I put a new key in, a new uh, terminal, I, which I got at Advanced Auto Parts. That's been working great. I've had the starter rebuilt from a place here in Jersey last year, and it didn't last more than a year. It was grounding out, the terminals were getting red hot. So I bought it in my garage. I'm not a starter guy, you know, I, I, I rebuild engines. But I took it apart, cleaned it up, wire brushed it, adjusted the brushes and stuff like that, and it's working now. So by the grace of God, it'll last, you know, a year or so, but we'll see what happens. So now this leads me to another thing. Um, this thing's got dipsticks for days, okay? You got one here, you got one there, you got one there, and then as far as hydraulic fluid goes, which I guess this is an Alice Chalmers thing. You remove this cap and you fill it up to the top of the reservoir, which is in the chassis. You fill it right to the top. And then when your pistons close, uh, the fluid comes up in this channel here and that's why you have a breather. Um, so I'm going to be replacing the hydraulic fluid, which is drained here because uh, I have no idea how old it is. I have no idea the last time it was replaced. And then I'll take you under the machine once I get a piece of cardboard. Okay, so here we are under the machine. Here's your oil pan, oil drain. As you can see, someone totally destroyed the bottom of this oil pan, which kind of has me a little um, concerned. This here, that's where your throw out bearing is. You can actually remove this cover plate and there's a grease fitting underneath. So take that into consideration. Here is your power steering fluid which they call the torque tube. That's your filter there. Here's your hydraulic fluid filter. So today I'm gonna replace the uh, shuttle, I mean the torque tube oil, which takes 12 quarts, so that's the drain bolt there. The machine calls for 303 hydraulic fluid, which is obsolete, and if you look into it, it's actually uh, a class action lawsuit 
they they got caught watering down 303 because it no longer needs to go through certain standards so everybody says that 826 or john deere j20a i think it's called would work fine in here so that's what i got it's got some high quality from vp racing i think it is but i'm gonna confirm real quick i've been trying to figure out what this is on the side of the tank i seriously cannot figure out for the life of me and then uh you got more drain bolts you got another one there okay and then uh you come back further and then you have another one there and then there's a final drive back there so a little bit of a project for me something to uh work on it's a lot of a project especially when you don't know anything about it but that's why i got these I have my Alice Chalmers 615 Operator's Manual, which is extremely helpful. Service and Lubrication Guide. Now, it says here, transmission oil, torque tube oil, shuttle clutch oil, final drive, all of that. So now, torque housing is 12 quarts. Transmission 12, final drive 11. Now, as you can see, uh, AM 303, which is the bad fluid. We're going to be using J20A. This 80 EP I'm having trouble finding. And then SAE 2020W, I'm also having a lot of trouble finding. So that's more fun for me to be able to figure out. So today I'm going to focus on the power steering torque tube. I'm going to try to drain it and refill it. All right, guys, so I'm under here now. I'm just going to go for it. 29 millimeter torque tube drain bolt. I cracked it loose. Um, the manual states it takes 12 quarts. So I'm hoping 12 quarts comes out. That's equivalent of three gallons and not 15 gallons because all I have is a five gallon drain bucket. So let the uh, jury know that if this fails, at least I tried. Let's give it a go. Look at that. It didn't look dirty at all. All right, we're gonna let that drain because about three gallons came out, which is really good. It smells terrible though, so I don't know if that's Part of the problem it doesn't look bad, but it smells horrible. All right, so um, I must say that went quite well for my first time working on a machine that I have no knowledge about whatsoever. So we got the oil drained out. Like I said, it looks pretty clean, so I don't even know if I should just cap it or see if there's all right, so it's been about an hour. I had to run home, do some stuff. I'm gonna put this back in. It's like barely dripping anymore. Okie doke. Now I'm just gonna tighten this down. I'll do like hand tight and then a little bit more because I don't want to damage it. Just like that, perfect. All right, so it's drained out. Now I'm gonna tackle the job of getting this old oil filter off, which is located right here, that one. And the part number is NAPO1452 or Wix 51452. All right, everybody, I just wanna show you what uh, my next step is. I'm gonna be using the VP Racing J20A Utility Tractor Fluid, and uh, it replaces 303, which is perfect. I got the oil filter off. As you can see, it goes right there. And I have a new oil filter. And the way I'm going to get the fluid in, because it's in a very uh, inconvenient spot, is I have this empty bottle of 80W90. It's clean on the inside. I actually took some of the old fluid and I just flushed it around to make sure no contaminants are in there. And then I'm going to take one of those hand pumps. Now, the case takes... Uh, three gallons so I know that if I fill it up three times and get all the fluid in there it'll be perfect because this is a one gallon container 
So it's probably going to take me quite some time, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to fill it up three times with some fresh J20A. All right, guys. So I ended up filling it with three gallons of the new, what is it, J20A plus fluid. And uh, it's right to the top of the dipstick right here. And um, after I run it through, I expect it to go down a little bit because it's gonna fill the filter. And uh, I'll add a little bit more, but that's good. So far, you know, that was a success. Now I have these two to address, uh, shuttle clutch, transmission, and then final drive and then the uh, hydraulic fluid which the reservoir is the chassis so I'm gonna do that next but I have to get some more five gallon buckets first and some more fluid now because I used three gallons of it so I'm gonna do that and uh, we'll be on our way <laughs> 